Good morning friends, I am Dr. Indranil Chaudhary, Consultant Gynecologist Laparoscopic Surgeon with Bhagavad Gita Women and Child Care Center. The topic of the day is ovarian cyst, its diagnosis and management. What is a cyst? Cyst is basically a tumor with liquid contents. When such a cyst happens in the ovary, we call it an ovarian cyst. Now what are the types of ovarian cysts that we commonly encounter? Cysts can be broadly classified into two types. It's either a physiological cyst or a pathological cyst. Normally in every woman, eggs are recruited and they grow with the starting of menses over the next two weeks. Such follicles or the egg containing cysts, sometimes it so happens does not rupture. Such cysts are called follicular cysts and are a part of physiology. When a patient comes to us with such a follicular cyst, these are an intrinsic part of any woman's body and does not need any treatment. Most commonly what happens is this woman will not have this follicular cyst when a repeat scan is done in three months time. In this regard, it is also very important to highlight an aspect that we encounter many, many ultrasound pictures with a given diagnosis of polycystic ovaries. In such cases, patients get scared. They come to the doctor telling that, doctor, I have a cyst in the ovary. It's important to understand that polycystic Ovarian syndrome has nothing to do with cysts per se. Cysts are entirely different from an ovulatory follicles which are commonly found in polycystic ovaries. Hence, it is important to recoin the terminology of polycystic ovaries to maybe a multi-cystic disease. Now coming to the pathological cysts that we encounter. When it's pathological, we further classify the pathological cyst into two types. One is a simpler form called the simple cyst, the other is a complex cyst. Simple cysts usually have clear fluid inside and usually grows up to around 6 to 8 cm size. Rarely it can even grow bigger. Complex cyst on ultrasound typically shows heterogeneous collection inside, could show papillary finger like projections on its surface, it could have solid components inside and are hence called complex variety of the cyst. Now how do we diagnose a cyst? A patient can present to a gynecologist clinic with various symptoms. The patient may present with irregular periods, it can, the patient can present with pain in the lower tummy. It could be even pain during periods or even pain during intercourse. There could be a gradually swelling of the lower tummy over the last 5-6 months. It could so happen also that the patient is absolutely not aware of the cyst and the patient has come for fertility treatment when you coincidentally detect a cyst. How do you further investigate? The commonest investigation that is done to diagnose a cyst is transvaginal sonography. On doing a good transvaginal sonography, you can actually identify the cyst, measure the size, as well as classify its variety by looking into the character of the cyst that has formed. If you see papillary growth on the surface, if you see the content of the cyst to be heterogeneous, if you see solid components, then you classify the cyst as a complex variety. Otherwise, you classify them as a simple variety. Whenever a patient presents to a doctor with a cyst, the biggest concern that the patient has is whether the cyst is of a cancerous variety or not. Fortunately, more than 90% of the cyst that the patient comes to us with are all of a benign variety. That is, it is not a cancerous one. There is a blood marker test called a CA125 which can sometimes suggest whether the possibility of that cyst of being a malignant one is high or not. However, it is important to 
actually utilize this test in the correct patient. There are a lot of benign cysts, means cysts of good variety, which can have a higher CO125 level, unnecessarily scaring the patient. So it is important that CO125 is done in the right age group, typically in the plus 40 of the postmenopausal age group, where they are more indicative of a cancerous variety of the cyst. But if this investigation is unnecessarily done in a younger reproductive age group person, say of 20, 25 or 30, even a raised level of CA125 may not be of any concern, but it unnecessarily causes a lot of panic among the patient and their relatives. However, if you find a cyst to be suspected of any malignant variety, you can go for a further testing through MRI. Coming to its treatment will obviously depend on the symptoms as well as the diagnosis. If we see the cyst is of a simple variety, which means of clear fluid contents and size less than 6 cm of cyst, only thing that is required is repeated transvaginal sonography every 6 months to keep a close watch on the cyst, whether it grows or remains static. In case it remains static, you do not need to do anything with such a cyst if it is of a simple variety with less than 6 cm size. However, if the cyst is more than 6 cm size or of a complex variety or is producing symptoms like acute pain, maybe of a torsion, then the cyst needs to be removed. The ideal way of surgery would always be a laparoscopic method of removal. What we commonly do in a young reproducing age group patient is go for a laparoscopic cyst removal where what we do is suck out the content of the cyst, take out the cyst wall, keeping back the healthy ovaries behind so that a significant portion of the healthy ovary can even be retained in the affected ovary where the cyst has formed. If you are suspecting malignancy or cancer in a cyst, it is always prudent not to go for a laparoscopic approach in such a patient. It is better to go for a laparotomy, means cutting open the tummy and going for a staging procedure and removing the cyst. Here, help from an oncology colleague would always be of great benefit. For a follow-up, where the patients have not been operated, it is important that in simple cysts, you keep the patient under close follow-up every six monthly and in patients who have been operated for a benign cyst, it, again, it is important to understand that such patients may have a higher recurrence of cyst in the future and it is a wise decision to go for a repeat transvaginal sonography every six monthly or a year to identify early recurrence.